Hello, and welcome to another video from Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service here in Ellensburg, Washington. And today what we have here is a Taramps MD8000.1V uh, EX version of their amplifier, which obviously you can see right off the bat, we have a blown power supply. Uh, but this is an updated version of their 8K amplifier, which really leans towards the design of the Smart 5 amplifier. Design, I didn't say power, but design, which is good. Uh, there's some things that I like that Taramps has done here. And um, there's just a few little things that I still would like to see done a little differently, but we'll get to that. So I just wanted to go over the quick, easy way that I diagnose amplifiers for repair. This is a warranty repair, so this isn't a quote, but I wanted to uh, explain what I do that will really pinpoint what you need to do to fix an amp. And the biggest thing is, is what do you need to fix to make this run again, right? That's what we do. We do what we need to do to make these run. But how do you know what you need to do? Well, it's easy. A digital multimeter or even a meter that will show you resistance will tell you what you need to do. For the most part, I mean, there are some small intrinsic details of an amp that uh, this won't show. But this will show you 90% of every common failure of an amplifier. So we already know power supply needs to be rebuilt. I mean, this is obvious. And it's both sides. So, of course, we're going to replace the transistors, we're going to replace the gate resistors, and we're going to replace the two drive ICs that drive the power supply, and we're going to replace, I do see one 10 ohm resistor here that did pop when this IC shorted. Here's the kicker on this. This popped this 10 ohm resistor. Chances of this PIC being damaged does increase when you see a blown resistor like this. That just tells me this IC has a pretty significant internal short, which is directly connected to the PIC over here. That is something I will address when I tear this apart and when I strip, it's called stripping. And when I strip the power supply, I will pull the ICs and I'll bump the remote well, over here. I'll bump the remote and you will see tiny quick pulses coming from the PIC to drive these drivers. If you don't see both those pulses, you're going to have two of them, then your PIC is damaged, and then you're going to have to contact me. Um, but uh, moving on from that, we know we have a failed power supply, and we're going to check the output section. And I'm going to tell you what you need to look for. In resistance, I'm going to check gate source, which we are 9.89K of resistance from gate to source on the low side of this half of the amplifier. And over here, we should be about roughly 9.9. .9. Yep, 9.9 .9 for the high side. So 9.8-ish, 9.9-ish, low side, high side. And the other side of the amplifier should be the same. 9.9, 9.9. .9. Nine, perfect, perfect, perfect. That's what we're looking for, 9.9K. 9.89, oh, so close to 9.9. .9. Very minute difference there in the tolerance of the circuits. But that's what we're looking for is that 9K. If you don't read 9K on the low side, high side, low side, high side, both sides of the amplifier, you have a shorted output section and it becomes really evident clear, you'll read something like 100 ohms gate to source, you'll read some crazy one, two, three K. But what that's telling you is there's a short in the output. So you'll end up replacing the transistors, you'll end up replacing the six pin gate uh, buffer drivers, and then you'll end up replacing the 2957 IC. 
depending on which side you're showing a short or not showing the 9.9K. This will be the same for all 8K EX amplifiers. 9.9K, high, low, high, low. If you read that, most likely the output section of the amplifier is just fine. There are instances where the preamp section is damaged from a shorted RCA or whatnot, but this will usually go into protect uh, when you fire it up. If you show 9.9K across the board on your output transistors, but the amplifier still goes into protect, then you have to go in here, you move your solder uh, bridge here, put it in shutdown to fire up your preamp without firing up the amplifier. Uh, <clears throat> and you have to, well, there's other steps you got to take, but you know what I mean. There's, uh, pre there's steps you got to take to check the preamp section. And usually that's going to be your uh, 319 over here and these ICs here. And if there's a short in the output, they'll pop a resistor in the feedback circuit. So there's other things, but again, this amp would go into protect. More times than not, when I read the 9.9K across the amplifier, these things fire right back up. Uh, so that's really what I wanted to go over today, was the process of me recognizing what I need to do on an amplifier. And... Uh, recording for on video what your values should read on an output section um, i got an email just over the weekend about uh, someone that has an md8k that uh, starts up but goes into protect that output short potentially i need to know what the resistance value is to tell you if you either have a output short on the uh, transistors or drivers or if you have a preamp section or a preamp short um, so I kind of need to know what your resistance values are, but that's kind of what I'm after is letting you guys know what to look for. So as always, guys, stay safe. Please keep fingers out of the rails. These things can create some just crazy amounts of voltage and available current. Very dangerous if you get tied up in this the wrong way. Uh, and if you have any questions, please leave them down below. And I always get to you guys as soon as I can and answer your questions to the best of my abilities. Sometimes I'm unable to give answers just depends on the situation. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you on the next one.